<laughs> okay, we are talking on page 90 in your science book, Pascal's Principles, okay? Uh, some of this can be a little tough, tough to follow along with. Tomorrow, I plan on trying to do some experiments. Um, you'll have about four questions to answer on, this, on the reading we're doing right now. You'll find those, of course, in your classroom work. Okay? All right, here we go. I'm going to do my best to try to explain some of this to you as, as we go. Okay? Um, up at the top, it's going to show you, we're going to do this experiment tomorrow. We'll take a couple uh, two-liter bottles, fill them up with water, and you're going to take one of your thumbs and press down on it. And, of course, you're going to, you're going to be applying pressure inside that bottle. Well, then you're going to take your other thumb and press down, and you're going to be able to tell the difference in the pressures that you are being applied here. Uh, and that's kind of is a good way to demonstrate Pascal's principle, okay? And then we're going to try to break it down a little bit for you here, okay? Um, you, you have seen this used many times and just not realized that it was Pascal's principle, okay? Uh, at first, it talked about how you would hesitate, hold your hand out, the aquarium attendant places a sea star in your hand. How many of you have ever held a live sea star? Yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, you feel those little feet down there? It's got like little suction cup feet. I want to teach me to ask questions. Okay, now, but here's the deal. They've got like little suction cup feet down there that, and you can feel them moving around, okay? It's really pretty cool. Uh, the many tiny feet on the animal's underside look something like a suction cup. And they tickle just a bit. And then the attendant explains that the sea star has a system of tubes containing water in its body. And as the water moves around in these tubes, it creates fluid pressure. And that's how this thing moves. Okay? He shifts pressure to the different tubings. And this is how he moves. Okay? Uh, the sea star also uses this system to obtain his food. When we get to marine biology, we will uh, watch a film clip uh, of one of them eating. It's really cool because he uses like a hydraulic system to eat. Okay, His mouth is actually in the middle of his body down underneath on the bottom. And the way he eats is he does not catch something. You would think with those arms he could catch something and bring it into his mouth, right? That's not what he does. He actually basically throws up his stomach yeah. oh, that's cool. and engulfs his prey and digests it and then brings it back in. Oh, that's what my brother does every day. <laughs> All right. That's pretty cool. All right, now. Transmitting pr pressure in fluid. If you look at the picture on the top of uh, page 91 there, We've all done this. Uh, and what that first picture there on the left is showing you, that there is pressure, the liquid is putting pressure on that bottle in every direction, both sides, top, and bottom. And it's equal, it's given equal pressure, okay? If you squeeze it, the pressure stays equal, but you intensify it, okay? You multiply it by ever how much pressure you are putting on the outside of that bottle, that fluid then is multiplied, and that's why if the top is not open, you can squeeze it so far and it will bulge out, but it will not, you know, go anywhere. But if you pop that top, that's why some of you sit here, and when you squeeze your water bottle, the people around you gets wet, okay? Because if the top is open, the pressure you apply, that water comes out under the same amount of pressure that you are applying to the bottle, okay? Yes, Kayla. Um, so on the first bottle, why does it look like some of the arrows are bigger than the others? And They're not. It's just, just the drawing. They're not supposed to be. It's the same amount of pressure. They might be a little bit longer, but they're, they're just applying the same pressure. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so. Yes, Miller. Sometimes uh, I was at a swim meet, and we were playing this game. It was like, you were jumping on water bottles, and you were saying you could do it with sort of the caps come off for... Okay, trying to get caps to come off the water bottles by squeezing. All right. Now, 
If you recall that fluid pressure in the closed container increases when you push against this side, by changing the fluid pressure at any spot in the closed container, you're transmitting pressure throughout the container. Okay, so in the 1600s, a French mathematician named uh, Pascal develops the principle to explain how pressure is transmitted in fluid. Okay, and Pascal's name is used for the unit of pressure. Okay, uh, and that's a PA. Okay, capital P, little a. Okay, that's that's how you write the measurement for pressure. Somebody says, how about PSI? That's pound per square inch. Okay, that's, a, that's different. That is a different measurement. Yes? I'm, I'm sorry, I know it's kind of off topic, but when we come back after Thanksgiving break and we have our test that Friday, uh -huh. um, will we do a review before the test? Maybe, if we have time. Like, okay. If we have time. And I, I have a day built in for review, yes. Can I do that? Okay. I do have a day to build in. I forget it. Yeah. Oh, I understand. Take some time off. Yeah. Yeah. We. I do have a day built in for a review. Or just okay. <laughs> All right. So, what is Pascal's principle? As you recall, fluid exerts pressure on any surface it touches. For example, the water in each bottle, shown up there at the top of the page, exerts pressure on the entire surface of that bottle. Okay up, down, and sideways. Remember we talked about the air pressure over us, about how it's heavy enough to, it could actually crush us, it weighs as much as an activity bus, but the reason it doesn't crush us is because it's all around us, it's coming at us from all directions, so therefore, it equalizes out. Same thing with this bottle, okay? The pressure, water pressure increases everywhere in the bottle if you squeeze on it, okay? Uh, Pascal discovered the pressure increases by the same amount throughout an enclosed or confined fluid. So what his uh, principle says is, when force is applied to a confined fluid, the change in pressure is transmitted equally to all parts of the fluid. Okay? That's a rigmarole. Okay? But what he's saying is, when you squeeze that bottle, yes, you're applying force at the bottom, but that liquid inside, all of it is under the same amount of pressure. Okay, it equalizes out. Okay. Uh, what is he doing? It's it's Brianna. Yes, stop. Yeah. If it's if it's bothering your classmates, let's not do it. Okay. All right. Um, how many of you have ever gotten a shot? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All of you, all of you have, okay? Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting in this classroom because you have to have your vaccinations in order to go to school. Um, now, hydraulic needle, oh, hydraulic, hypodermic needle, okay? Think about it. You know, they're pretty good size, right? The tubing. The needle is really small most of the time, okay? And they got, you know, they draw the, whatever shot you're getting, if it's like the flu vaccination, they draw that into the, up to the, the plastic part. And let's say the person applying the pressure is, with their thumb, is applying 10 pounds of pressure. Okay? Um, that needle is very, very small, right? So that pressure is being multiplied as it goes out of that little needle. That needle is designed to equate 10 times the, I'm sorry, a thousand times the pressure being applied. So when she's applying, the nurse is applying 10 pounds of pressure, the needle is multiplying that by a thousand. So you are getting about 10,000 pounds of pressure putting that stuff into your muscles and all this stuff, okay? So because it's got, it's got to go in like that in order to spread and whatnot. So that's a, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty cool, uh, the, the fact that it will multiply that many times because that needle gets very, very small, okay? Most of the time you get a shot, they don't come at you with a needle this big around, you know? I mean, it, it's, a, it's very small, very, very small. I have this dreamer I don't understand how... 
Yeah. Because the pressure being applied here has to be is, is the, the same amount of force is being applied. The same amount of pressure is being applied throughout. And because now the opening is smaller, it multiplies up. Yeah. Wow. It's same thing if you do it if you if you uh, on a hydraulic lift. The tubing that starts it off might be this big. When it gets to the car that's going to lift that car, it's this big. It multiplies it by thousands. That's why it can lift the car. You just talking about this in because that's the principle. That's what we're talking about. When force is applied to a confined fluid, the change in pressure is transmitted equally to all parts of the fluid. Okay? So if you've got if you've got a bigger opening, then that same amount of force that was in the small opening is now being transmitted here, but it's multiplying because the opening is bigger. And the hypodermic needle is is smaller now. All right. Um, let's see if we can do this. We'll try to show you the board here. All right, right here. Okay, you can see the. Uh, I got pictures of three containers. You want to hold this for me? See if you can film this. There you go. Good. All right. Now, I got three containers. The bottoms are all the same, okay? But you see they're different shapes. And uh, if I put the exact same, you know, I fill them equally with water, which one has the most pressure in it? Which one has the most pressure? What do you think? Would it be the one on the far right? You think it's over here? Okay. What do you think? Pushes it down. All of them have pressure, but when you push it down, it goes down and it starts pushing. Down. Okay, what do you think? I'm gonna ditch the one part because the opening is smaller. Yeah. Okay, what do you think? Yeah, those, um, the all right, all of those are great guesses. Here's the deal because the bottoms are the exact same size, they have the exact same amount of pressure. Oh, okay, all right, now I know you're looking at going, but wait a minute, you've got you got added water on this one, and you're missing water on this one. Yeah. But the pressure on the inside is making up for the difference in the water. Yes. So they're all the same. So they're all the same. They're the pressure the same. on the inside of those are all the same. The pressure is the amount of water. Isn't that weird? Wait, the pressure is the amount of water. Thank you. The pressure. The pressure, the pressure is the same. The amount of water is not the same. I was about to say. Okay, the, the amount of water is not the same. The amount of pressure is the exact same because the base is the same size. I know, it's weird. I told you, some of this is hard to follow. Yes? So, like, if you pass one of those, but there's always, like, a little bit of a few drops, it's still the same. Well, I'm talking about just a few drops or something running down the side. Okay? We're just talking, talking, we're, we're talking in theory here. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. If they were different size containers, then obviously they would not have the same. But the base of them is the same. So therefore, the same amount of pressure is being applied. Why is it not the top? Okay. Isn't that some? Isn't that some? Okay. Why is it the bottom? Because it's the Pascal principle, and that's the way it works. Okay, it's not that simple. Okay. All right. Now, as you can see, Pascal principle at work, if you look on page 92 up at the top, this is one of the hydraulic lifts we're talking about, uh, a small one. But if you apply force, if you see where, on the one on the left there, the, side, the, the ends are the exact same. So if you apply force to the left, every how much force you apply to the left is transmitted to the piston on the other side. It's the exact same because the openings are the exact same. Okay. Yeah. Of You're applying pressure to a, a piston goes up and down. Okay. And if, when it goes down, it is it is applying force. And that's moving that, that liquid has to go somewhere, right? So it goes out the other side, and it forces the piston on that side up, and that's what lifts things. Uh, if you look on system B there, yes, 
I gotta take a phone call. Yes, Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. What is this? That's cheesy. Yeah. That's cheesy. That's from Batman. Okay. That one's from Batman. I thought you knew she was remote. I didn't uh, realize I had to mark her absence. What happened? Macy. He's not here. Yeah. Uh, could be back tomorrow, hopefully. Okay. All right, now. Stop, please. Folks! Stop. 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 How many times have I said stop? Okay. That's a daily thing. If I got a nickel for every time I said stop, I'm going to retire at Christmas. Okay? All right. But, as you can see on, on the one on system B there, you apply the force in the small one, and as it comes through, because that opening gets bigger, it's nine times bigger. So it multiplies the force coming up by nine. So if you applied 100 pounds as you push down, then that would lift something up to 900 pounds, okay? Because that force coming up is equal to 900 pounds because it multiplies it, okay? Uh, suppose you fill a system uh, with a, uh, a with water and then push down on the left piston. The increased fluid uh, pressure will be transmitted to the right piston. According to Pascal's principle, both pistons experience the same fluid pressure. Okay? Now, if you look at system B, which we just talked about, it is nine times larger. So it will generate, it will multiply it by nine. If it was 15 times larger, it would mul uh, multiply it by 15. Wait, but, okay? Wait. Catherine. Well, basically, I mean, it's kind of like that. Uh, a a lighter person can lift a heavier person on that because of the... Uh, but it's not the same force just because you could have a, um, you could have a really heavy kid on one side and a really skinny... But we're not talking about seesaw. She just asked if it was the same. No, we're talking about a hydraulic system. I, I've never been on a seesaw that had hydraulics. Okay. Kelly. Then how does a needle multiply it by a thousand? Because it's that force has still got to go somewhere. Just because it's a smaller opening doesn't mean you're applying force to the bigger side now. So it still it still multiplies that force. Okay, that's why. I know it, that's what I told you. It's it's a little tough to follow. It's, it's kind of tough yeah. to understand that sometimes. Leo. I'm sorry, but can you explain the? I will when let, let me finish up and I will I will go back. Thank over you. Here. I'm sorry. I just, I it's okay. No, if you if you have a question, it's good to ask. It's good to ask. Yes. Um. But if, wouldn't it be all that force if the like all that water is being pushed down through the cable? Like if you have that amount of But it's got a smaller area and it's got to push through that at the same speed. But it multiplies it. Yeah. Okay, it multiplies it. You're going to have to trust me on this, okay? You're going to have to trust me on this. Okay? I mean, I can prove it mathematically, but I don't have a void big enough. Please stop talking so I can hear the question. It's like 200 pounds of pressure going down through the that means that it's going to be 1,800 pounds going up. It depends on how big the opening is. If it's, if it's two times bigger, yes. If it's 10 times bigger and you're applying 200 pounds of pressure, it's going to be 10 times 200. Wait, but how 10 times bigger than what? Then the other opening. Look at the pictures on, on the top here. You see on uh, system B, you see how that top, that one side is a lot larger than the other one, okay? But when I apply the pressure because of Pascal's principle that he discovered that fluid is being, the, the pressure has to be equal throughout all of that pressure. So the same amount of force is being sent throughout that, but when it gets to that other side because it is larger, the same amount of force is being applied, but now it multiplies because you've got more of the fluid going up. It's, it's complicated. I'm not, 
we, we, but we'll I'll see if I can explain it a little bit better. Yeah, okay. I don't think so. Okay. Well, part of the problem is y'all don't sit in here and you're not used to having to pay attention in class because you have not, everything you've done up to this point has been reviewed. Yeah. You've seen it before. You're seeing something new for the first time this year in science, yeah. <coughs> and it's blowing your mind because it's not easy. You've actually got to take the time and read and apply and listen and things like that. And for some of you, you're struggling with that because you still want to talk to your friends the entire class. Okay? I mean, that's just the way it is. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. So once you figure out, oh, shoot, this is something new. I have no clue what he's talking about. Perhaps I need to listen. Perhaps I need to follow along in the book. Maybe I need to go back and actually look at this on my own. You're going to find that it starts to register with you. Okay? All right. Hydraulic systems, um, they work the exact same way. Uh, again, that's why, uh, how many of you have ever seen a hydraulic jack that they use in like warehouses and things? Yeah. Uh, a pallet to come off a truck, it might weigh 2,000 pounds. It might have 2,000 pounds worth of stuff on it. Most people cannot run over there and grab up a 200 pound pallet and go running off with it, right? So they have these hydraulic jacks and they have the forks, okay? And they fit up underneath it. And you've got a handle, and you can actually pump that thing up with one hand. And you're lifting 2,000 pounds. Because what's happening is the tubing of the, of the fluid, the hydraulic fluid, is going down to a, through the cylinders, and you've got basically a piston under there that works those forks that will lift them. Okay? So I'm applying, you know... 30 pounds of pressure here, and it's being multiplied by 10, so it's lifting 30,000, yeah, it's lifting 3,000 pounds, okay? Uh, a hydraulic lift in a car. How many of you have ever seen the car sitting up on the, like, getting oil change or tires? Or something? Yeah, yeah, the car is jacked up so the guy can get to it easier, right? Um, that's a hyd hydraulic lift, okay? And all he's doing is pushing a button on the wall, and it is sending the force through a little bitty tube and that tube gets bigger and as it goes and if you ever notice that cylinder that works that thing it's pretty big so it's multiplying it by thousands that's why it can lift the car okay yes Taylor. yeah so that still makes it a little confusing how a little tiny needle can do it by thousands well, son, you can either believe me or you cannot. It's, it's entirely up to you. I don't have a tendency to stand up in front of my classes and lie to you, but, you know, you don't want to buy into it, that's okay. You don't have to. Yeah, it's just kind just, of you know, confusing. It is confusing. I'm not going to argue with you. In fact, I think I started this class off by saying this can be really confusing. <laughs> yeah, so, I agree with you. Okay? All right. Uh, brake pads works the same way on page uh, 94, okay? Uh, how many of you, the brake pad in your parent's car, not that big, okay? It's not that big, it's bigger than the gas because they want you to be able to hit that thing. But uh, you press on that and it sends, again, you just got that small opening that comes through. It goes up to a brake um, cylinder up under the hood, which then sends the hydraulic fluid to the disc in the wheel, and when you apply the pressure, that disc has a box on it that will push against the, the wheel, not the tire, but the wheel, okay? And it will push against that, the hub, and it will slow it down. Friction will slow it down, okay? Uh, and it builds up heat. That's why you don't want to drive. Uh, when I used to do driver's training, you'd always have somebody that would try to go 80 miles an hour down the road with their foot on the brake all at the same time. Oh, you sound like Michael. You're messing up, you're messing up my brakes. Quit doing that, okay? Okay, you can't do that. Uh, anyhow, that's why you drive with one foot, not two feet, okay? Uh, but it, it works the same way, okay? It multiplies it out the same way, okay? All righty. It's about as clear as mud, right? Good luck.